Okay, guys, I decided to uh, just do this a little bit more efficiently. Um, I had technical, well, my computer died yesterday in one class, so that was my bad. Um, and my charger was downstairs. By the time I could have run to get it, it would have been a mess. So that's my bad. But today I just decided to do this as a video and let you guys work at your own pace. Um, I'm going to go kind of quickly through this, and then I'm going to give you one other assignment that uh, I will create about this lady named Jane Adams because she's pretty important and most people don't know much about what she did. Anyway, so uh, I think I covered this in one class, but I'll say it again so that the video can be used for both. Um, we were looking at um, the anti-immigrant, talking about how you had an anti-immigrant uh, sort of surge at the time period. The word for that would be nativism. Um, but for sure, many of the immigrants who came here definitely wanted to try to Americanize to a degree um, in order to be successful. And the government worked to help, and other groups also worked to help help them do that. Um, you had schools that were created to help them learn to read and write. Now, the government did also begin to require literacy tests for immigrants um, in, in order to emphasize the fact that they wanted workers who had the skills to be able to do this. And some of this also reflects um, a bit of prejudice because sometimes that literacy test could also be used to kind of keep people out. As you can see here in this cartoon, literacy test, fingers pointing away, suggesting that the land of the free, as the Statue of Liberty kind of suggests, isn't totally that, that there were absolutely reasons and requirements for immigrants coming here. It's a picture of some Italians, kids and men, probably dads and sons there. I don't know why it was just men, but um, there to learn English. And this is a uh, English class that they were taking. Um, so one of the other effects of this very, very rapid change is the fact that cities were going to begin to get super crowded. Um, I love this image. I think it's in Chicago. I'm not sure. I need to go back and source that. But um, it's either Chicago or New York. Um, but you can see, imagine, this is like the mother of all traffic jams, and no one's going anywhere fast. These were streetcars that were developed working off electricity by probably about 19, well, right around 1900, um, maybe 19, a little bit after. Um, but you still have horses and carriages and people and I mean that's a lot of chaos probably a policeman on a horse there I'm not positive um, so one of the things that happens is you get um, big problems that um, of how, how are you going to house all these people how are you going to transport all these people how are we going to have clean water of course uh, some of those challenges were not completely um, fixed if you look at uh, how when Issues arise like a major snowstorm, our infrastructure, which is basically electricity, water, roads, all of that can break down pretty quickly, as we've seen this week. We are thankful we're not in Texas. If any of you have relatives in Texas, I hope everybody's okay. Um, so this is one of the challenges that's going to um, be presented in this time period. Some of these things we'll talk about when we get to the progressive era. We'll talk about the um, push to try to fix those. Um, you do begin to see a push for education at this time period, um, trying to help people who are in conditions like these. But these are some of the, the living conditions. This is your, your typical um, apartment in New York City. This is called a tenement. Usually they were one room. Um, the person who took the picture was probably standing about at the window that looked out on the street. This is where this family lives, in this space right here. Um, the uh, bathrooms before 1900 for sure were outside, just a, often just a board with a hole in it, no divider. You had to share that space with other people. No sewage, all of that waste would be leaked into the streets. I mean, we were talking not just that it was crowded, but that the conditions of people living together were, were very rough at the time period. Um, but the buildings that they lived in were called tenement buildings. Here's another image you can see. Um, these buildings 
a lot of them are still standing in New York. In fact, one of the coolest museum, museums in New York is called the Lower East Side Tenement Museum, where you can go in and really see how exactly how these things looked. Um, people, of course, and, and when we talk about people who came here to work, they weren't all in factories. Some people actually worked in their homes making things um, so-called piecemeal. Like in the little film about Yannick, he, he knew a kid who made things at home and then took them in and got paid uh, per thing that he made. So that's one way that child labor operated. But again, you were beginning to also see schools in this time period. Um, just some more images of how people were living. Another thing that was going to be adding to the crowded conditions is the fact that a lot of farmers were moving to cities because you needed less manpower as farm machinery got more efficient. So that will add to um, crowded cities. Um, let's see, you're going to be over here. One thing I want to emphasize, there was no, just like there was laissez-faire and government stood out of business, there was no, like, Medicaid, Medicare, welfare, Social Security, none of that existed at the time period. If you need help, you had to turn to other groups. And with images like this and this, you did begin, particularly when people see photographs of this, you begin to have people who said, hey, maybe particularly within church communities, people said, maybe we have a Christian obligation to help these people. Um, and you see several things that come out of that. One of them will be Jane Addams, who I'll talk about separately. Um, in the story core I used the other day, they mentioned the YMCA, which stands for Young Men's Christian Association, Young Men's Christian Association. That goes right there. My cat is sneezing. He has a cold. Um, you also saw the beginning of the anti-liquor movement with the Women's Christian Temperance Union, who believed that um, alcohol really, really added to the problems of um, uh, that... Uh, Sorry, I got distracted. Alcohol really added to the problems of the communities where they were trying to work on things. There's Young Men's Christian Association goes in that blank. I'm going to come back to Jane Addams. Uh, but she, yeah, that, that's a separate note. Um, the Salvation Army is also something that goes right here. They got started at the time period. Um, not really, as you all know, about an army or anything. It's a Christian organization that raises money for charities. Um, young Women's Christian Temperance Movement began to focus on, like I said, preventing alcohol abuse. I love this picture. Lips that touch liquor shall not touch ours. Um, and there's a typo over here, and I corrected it here. You had a new focus, not on preventing. I have no idea, and I keep free every year. I forget to fix that over here, but a new focus on promoting education. It wasn't compensatory or mandatory yet, but you were beginning to move towards that. The understanding that um, education can help uplift people. Um, and you can see here these kids are, this is a great photograph, I think. These kids, I'll check out their feet. Looks like they've just given their teacher a gift or something, but this is a one of these one room classrooms where you've got people of all ages in their work, and this looks like an older teenager and younger kids. Um, and, yeah, no shoes. Um, um, to deal with the conditions in the city, you also began to see uh, fire departments at this time. Those were not always a thing. Um, I think they had been proposed first by Ben Franklin, but um, fire departments, sanitation departments, uh, public transportation, even subways were invented by about 1900 or a little bit after. Um, not the sandwich. Ha ha. Um, just a quick little video of what public transportation would look like. 1899, this is uh, a shot of a streetcar about to go across the Brooklyn Bridge. 
People walking on the Brooklyn Bridge. And it's being shot from a, a streetcar or a train, maybe going over the um, uh, the rail. Anyway, um, all right. The last part of the notes down here, and then this part, which we kind of already did. I don't know why I added that to your notes, but um, we'll go over on Tuesday. Um, so I'm going to let you do this, and if you will do also the Jane Adams uh, bell ringer thing, um, then get your notes filled in. We're going to have a test on Tuesday. Um, I'll kind of wrap up all this on Monday, and I'll give you one more short assignment tomorrow. Alrighty.